Well, today I want to find out if it is possible to use ChatGPT, the AI system, uh, for the identification of microscopic specimens. Hi, hello and welcome. Micro Hunter here. Well, I do have a little mini aquarium in a jar and there are some algae growing in this mini aquarium and I simply put it under the microscope and I wanted to find out whether ChatGPT actually is able to identify the type of algae that I have here. Okay, so this is basically a picture here. Of course, it's filament as algae, um, not surprisingly, chloroplasts, these are the green structures inside the cells, long string-like uh, cells. Yeah, so first sight, clearly filamentous algae, but what type is it, right? And this is actually where it starts to become a little bit difficult, but I did find those interesting cells here that contain those ring-shaped structures in the cell wall, um, yeah, on, on many of those cells. Yeah, it's kind of uh, kind of strange a little bit. Um, and uh, here, here, here we have a close-up here. And uh, what I did is, is I typed in a prompt into chat GPT, hoping that based on the description of the algae, that it's able to provide some suggestions of what it could be, which type it could be, which yeah, genus at least it could be. And then by typing the name into Google picture search, um, I hope to be able to find reference pictures to compare it with. And if the pictures then match um, with uh, my the pictures that I have, then I've ad identified it. So that's kind of the two-step process. First, uh, go into chat GPT and uh, get some names and then type in the names and then basically um, hope to be able to identify it. And this is what I typed in here, okay? So I've typed, uh, help me identify a filamentous algae, okay? Um, that's, of course, something that I already knew, that it's a filamentous algae. It's a eukaryote, obviously, <laughs> yeah? It's green, obviously, right? And, and it's in filaments, yeah, uh, it's not branched. Uh, this way, I wanted to exclude, of course, uh, any fungi. <laughs> okay, it's kind of a little bit redundant to say that it's not branched. It's clear that it's not a fungus. Um, but there's one characteristic, and that is that, that in several cells, there seems to be ring-shaped structures in the cell wall or thickenings. Okay, and I also wanted to exclude spirogyra. The chloroplast is not spiral shaped. So this uh, last uh, sentence, um, yeah, kind of should limit the possibility here because spirogyra is indeed a very common algae. And I wanted to exclude that possibility right out of hand. Um, and then um, I typed it in and it, indeed it did not take very long. And uh, what did uh, chat uh, GPT uh, suggest? Well, exactly, it was actually spirogyra. <laughs> uh, so based on your description, it sounds like the filamentous algae you're describing might be a form of the genus Sparogyra. No, it's not here. I did include a picture um, and in the picture you can clearly see that it looks very different because Sparogyra has a spiral-shaped chloroplast, which we do not have here, and it completely ignored uh, those ring-like uh, cells uh, or those ring-like thickenings, thickenings in some of the cells. So I said it's not Sparogyra. Okay, and then it kept on suggesting other possibilities here. Giving you description and the exclusion of spirogyra, we might consider Zagnema as a stronger candidate, especially since you know that the absence of spiral chloroplasts. Zagnema is characterized by its two star-shaped chloroplasts in each cell. No, that's also not the case. And again, it's completely ignoring those ring-shaped uh, yeah, uh, structures. And it uh, suggests another possibility as well. However, another possibility to consider is, I, I don't even know how to pronounce this here, um, yeah, which is similar in that it is green, oh come on, of course it's green, uh, filamentous and eukaryotic and typically has a flat ribbon-like chloroplast that is not spiral. It simply keeps on um, going very generic um, and keeps on listing um, yeah, um, a whole bunch of, of, of algae, but uh, yeah, it completely ignored uh, the special characteristic, the, those ring-shaped thickenings, yeah, completely ignored that. So I decided, well, maybe I should uh, should um, really place a stronger emphasis on this. It's not not Zagnema either. Place a stronger focus on the ring-shaped structures at the end of some cells. That's what I typed. And then it actually was able to identify it. Look, this is what I got here. With the clarification that this filamentous algae isn't Zagnema and considering the unique ring-shaped structures at the ends of some cells, another potential identification for your algae could be Oedogonium. And that is indeed the correct genus, okay? Um, this is also the genus that I found out using my reference book. And of course, I also found online. Then using a picture search, I found, uh, yeah, um, again, algae that contain those interesting ring-shaped structures, which are thickenings of the cell wall. And they have even a specific name. They are called cap cells. 
And this is also what ChatGPT told me. These are thick uh, walled ring-like uh, structures at the ends of the cells, which are particularly noticeable during certain growth phases. They can sometimes appear as ring-shaped thickenings, and they're basically a leftover from cell division. Um, the process is a little bit complex in cell division in this uh, of this um, algae here, and these are basically thickenings that are kind of uh, yeah, leftovers or remnants of, um, of cell division. So I've identified it. Um, it took a little bit of time, um, but by going back and forth, I was actually able to, to find the name of, um, at least the genus name of this algae. And then I tried something else. Um, because I've got the paid version of ChatGPT version 4, um, it's also possible to upload pictures. And uh, I then uploaded this picture here and wanted to see if it is able to identify the algae based on this picture. So this was a completely different chat um, a few days later. So it did not reference uh, my previous conversation with ChatGPT. And this is what it suggested. <clears throat> it somehow really likes Spirogyra. The image appears to show a microscopic view of a filament's algae. That is correct. The specific characteristics, such as the presence of distinct cell walls, chloroplasts, and filamentous structures, suggests that it might be the type of blue-green algae cyanobacteria clearly wrong. Cyanobacteria yeah, look very different. Or green algae from the genus Spirogyra, definitely not. Or Cladophora, um, um, yeah, also, also not. Okay, so it and the description that it gives, like the filamentous structure and the chloroplasts and so on, um, yeah, is is very generic. And honestly, um, chloroplasts can be found in eukaryotes, yeah, and not in cyanobacteria. Yeah, so it's 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 also factually not not quite um, quite correct here either. Okay, um, but so it was not able to uh, completely identify it using a picture, but it was able to identify it as some kind of a filamentous algae. Okay, so we see that um, picture identification is also not quite well developed yet. Uh, but I think uh, ChatGPT is still quite young, so I can expect that maybe also in the future, um, yeah, this uh, AI these AI systems are able to help us in identification of specimens and I'm looking kind of forward for that and I can imagine that maybe in the future maybe it's not even only possible to identify them using a picture but maybe also by video sequence so we can also include the movement that's a little bit my hope but I think in order to train the AI systems I think uh, yeah there must be probably quite a bit more data um, yeah must be processed and uh, the AI system must be trained using a little bit more data I can imagine and then of course uh, yeah, there's always a built-in limit as well because not all of the species can be actually distinguished and identified using a microscope. So we're limited to only the visual aspect um, of identification, not the chemical one. I mean, I'm getting carried away now, um, but I just want to say that uh, microscopy itself also has certain limits um, yeah, for identifying microscopic specimens. And I'm going to leave it at that. I think uh, it's interesting uh, and uh, some fascinating um, things that you can do with th those AI systems. And I encourage you also to try that. Of course, I can also I also want to encourage you to subscribe to this channel if you like these type of videos. I wish you all the best. Happy microbe hunting as always. And see you around next time. Bye-bye.